so powerful. I felt that. So today I want to talk about a word of the Lord that um, the Lord gave me for this year. And I was asking the Lord last night. I said, Lord, what do you want to say to hope? What a beautiful. First of all, you guys are so good looking and you're anointed. Yeah, see, he knows who he is in Jesus. He knows who he is. The worship, my God, my God, your worship. Look, just let me come lay out, you know, let me just come lay out. So amazing. So I want to talk about, um, I, I was in December, this past December, I was in prayer and I just have, you know, everybody's got their walking, I walk and pray in tongues. And as I was walking, praying in tongues, the Lord uh, spoke to me and he said this, he said, I, first of all, I felt this thing like a sword. I tell you, prophets are kind of, we kind of have weird experiences sometimes, but I felt this thing like a sword go inside of me. And as, as it went in, I heard the Lord say this, tell my people to decree over their families, businesses, and churches, and over their lives that the goodness of God would overtake them in this, in the, this year, in 2023. I don't usually get words for the year. I usually get seasonal words. But this one, the Lord actually spoke to me about 2023. Tell my people that they would, if they decree, you guys, I'm sure learned about decrees. You do write out decrees over your family. If you want to see some change, write a decree and make it plain. And write a decree over your family if you want to see some shifted. That they would see the goodness of the God in, in those areas that you want to see transform. And so, so literally the day after <laughs> something, it always happens, right? The day after when you get the revelation. So the day after like something happened and I had to actually go in back to my prayer closet and for hours just pray in tongues until I saw the breakthrough that I would see the goodness of God over what? So some of you that gave today, God's going to do, a, you're going to get a breakthrough, but here's the deal. You got a war with the word that was given to you. Okay. So until say, Lord. Lord, Lord, I sowed in what you, what you asked to sow in. And Lord, we believe for breakthrough over our finances, right? Decree, write a decree and make it plain. So, so as I was doing that, I, was, I had to like just war that day. And then bam, that breakthrough happened the day after, right? So, so I started thinking about, I, I'm sure you guys know the song, Goodness of God. Okay, so here's here's some of the words because like I like to I, I decree as I'm singing, you know, don't come and just sing to sing, decree what you're singing. It says, I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days, I just get a little, whew. all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I'll sing of the goodness of God. You know, some of us sometimes forget he's so good. And sometimes we just prop our problems up bigger than the goodness of God. What if like in the middle of your pain, you just say, God, I welcome the goodness. When you're going through a hard time, you go, God, I invite you in that hard place. Because I need, I, I want to remember your goodness. All my life, you've been faithful. You know, when I, was, when I was young, I'm now older. And when I was young, I would on purposely go hang out with, like, people in their 80s. And I would go ask them if I can come over to their house. And, you know, and I would, like, in our church. And I would ask them when I was super, super young. I would ask them, I said, tell me about God. Tell me about your relationship. And you know what they would all say? It, they weren't all in the same room. And they would all say, he's been so good. He's been so good. And for, it's different when a 20-year-old tells me that towards an 80-year-old telling me that. He's been so good. Why have we forgotten that? We find all these things to, to, to bend and to lay on and become. That's why addiction's so big. Because we can't deal with the pain inside of us so we go to something else what if what if in this season instead of going to something else instead of sitting having a netflix binge or whatever that thing is that tries to hold you you go god i invite the goodness i'll remember your goodness i'll go through and remember how good you are to me and when you do that faith inside of you rises up in the middle of it 
And all my life, you've been so, so good. With every breath I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You've led me through the fire. Do you know when most people fall away from the Lord is when things, when, when he's trying to kill you and you think that, you think that God has left you. Here, here, here's a good indication. You know, American Christianity sometimes, look, oh, you're so wonderful. You're, you're the best thing. You need a little bit of that, but just a little bit. Here's the deal. God's trying to kill you so he can be strong in you. Because some of us need to be killed. I don't know about you, but that's an invitation from God to say, come into those places and kill the attitudes and some of the things that right up, rise up inside of us. Look, we get offended about everything. I can't believe she's raising her hand over there. She knows what she did. No, you need to let that stuff die inside of you. God's trying to kill you so he can rise in you. They can't be too, I must decrease so he can increase. Why do we forget that? Oh, you're so wonderful. They're not telling me. My pastors aren't telling me how wonderful I am anymore. Because God's inviting us to become mature in this season that you don't need all that all the time. And so in the middle of it, when God's killing you, you need to embrace the process and remember the goodness of God and remember who he is. You've led me through the fire. In the darkest night, you're close like no other. I've known you as father. And in a fatherless generation, some people don't even know how to sing that verse. They see a father, somebody that left them. They see some father, somebody that abused them. They don't, some of them don't even know what that looks like. And a good invitation is if that is part of what you're doing, you need to get into scripture and find out what the father looks like. I've known you as a friend and I've lived in the goodness of God. I'm going to give a lot of scripture, okay? So I love scripture. So when I'm here, you'll get, always get tons of scripture. Psalm 23, 6. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know why we have lesser lovers that come up in our lives? Because we don't understand his goodness. And we don't understand he's walking with us. And somehow we pick up lesser lovers. We let things in our eye gates. We listen to things that are ungodly. And we, we go out and we act carnal in the world. Psalm 27, 13, and 14. This one's in ESV. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Psalm 34, 8, and then if I taste and see that the Lord is good, blessed is the one who takes a refuge in him. You are so blessed when you choose to take refuge in the Lord in the hard times. You're so blessed. Psalm 33, 5, he loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of God. You know, some of us are stuck in our disappointments. We all get them. And I'm so sorry that you've gone through such a hard time. But here, here's, here's what I want to invite you into. In this season, you want to see the goodness of God, invite him in. He's not going to jump in, your, in the middle of your life. You have to invite him in. And when you invite the goodness of God in the middle of your turmoil, in the middle of your disappointment, God's going to show up. He's going to show up. I want to prophesy, you'll see the goodness of God. When the Lord started to speak this to me, I, not, I saw, I don't know if you guys started seeing revival start to break out in different areas at the beginning of this year. And I thought, God, when he said I would see the goodness of God, it's not just that I would believe the goodness of God, but I would actually see the goodness of God. So many lives transformed. And so you say, Elizabeth, here, here is this. How, what are those things? And so I'm going to give you four ways to see the goodness of God in this season. Guard your peace. 
Hey, look, can we just be real? I've been in church a long time, okay? Can we be real? Some of you guys, y'all don't even need to, like, this This will be my biggest point to you, okay? Some of you guys just give people your peace. Like, Oh, no, she didn't. She just, she just went there again with me. And you're getting so flustered. You're getting so crazy. And it's like the devil knows who to send to you to press that one little button. And that button's been pressed like 30 times that you lose your cool every single time. Guard your peace in this season. John 14, 27 says this, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you, I do not give to you as the world gives you, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. I want to show you the difference between kingdom peace and the world's peace. And I, I want you to look and say, look at yourself, and I'm looking at myself too, do I, am I led by the world's peace or am I led by kingdom peace? Here's what the world's peace, this is what the dictionary says peace is. Freedom from disturbance, a state or period in which there is no war or a war has ended. So the world's peace says this. When I get through my problem, I'll have peace. Oh, no, that's not what the kingdom peace is. The kingdom peace says in the middle of trouble, you're going to have peace and you need to stay in peace. You know, when I go through hard times, here is what I do. I stay in peace. And like when people come to say, da, 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 I'm like, you know what? I'm keeping my peace. How many people do we know, whether it's you or someone else, that you throw away your peace so easily? You get frantic. Here's, here's how I know that we, we, we all, starting with a, me, we all need to increase in keeping our peace. Do y'all remember during, when the pandemic started, the toilet paper craze? My God. Okay, I live in a little city named, it's Maricopa in Arizona. It's just south of Phoenix. And I went into the Walmart there and all the paper towel was there. I went over to the toilet paper section during that and all the toilet paper was gone. Like every single one, it was like blank slate. To this day, nobody can tell me what that craze was about. But a spirit of fear hit us, and we all ran and got toilet paper. We still don't know why we got toilet paper. Some of y'all still got toilet paper uh, left over. That your inheritance will be to your kids, paper to, toilet paper. Does anybody here tell me what the toilet paper craze was that we all ran out and got toilet paper? No. I had a friend that was like, man, I'm on my fourth store trying to find toilet paper. Like, is it real? Like, did y'all have that too? Here's the deal. We have got to keep our peace. What if when that happened, we all went and we went to the Lord and say, Lord, does this matter? Am I going to be okay? But we didn't. We took that stinking spirit of fear and we just rode on it over to Walmart to try to buy some toilet paper. <laughs> a different type of peace. All right, a different. Ephesians 6, 15 says, Paul says, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Here's what happens. So there's actually the Roman sandals are called, they're called caligas, right? And so what they would do at the bottom of their sandal, because the terrain there was so rough. Like I live in an area, you're, you guys probably have softer ground here, but I live in Arizona. It's really hard, but so it's a little bit like this. So what they would do is they would have these, um, they say it's between six to eight inches of these spokes on the bottom of their shoe, these soldiers. And what they would do is they would go into the rough terrain terrains, maybe it's like your life, you're going through a rough part, what they would do is they would stick their feet down into the ground, um, and remember peace, peace, right? You got to stick it down to the ground. If the enemy can take your peace, he's got you. You got to stick it in the ground in the rough terrain during the rough times, and all of a sudden, that's how they would hold up. They would, they'd be able to hold what they have. The worst thing a soldier can do is be laid out. For the enemy to get you on your back because then he can overtake you. What is it God parallels it is he said you were shod, you were shod with peace. If the enemy can steal your peace in this season, he's got you. Because you believe anything when your peace is gone. You believe all the fears that television tells you to believe. This season, guard your peace. 
peace is a spiritual weapon. Remember, if you remember anything from my sermon today, peace is a spiritual weapon. Don't let people steal your peace and don't give it away freely. In this season number two, in this season, fight for your faith. My, my pastor, Dr. Michael Maiden, says this. He says, faith never comes out empty-handed. You know, you know what pleases God? This is what the Bible says. Your faith. Your faith pleases God. Here's how you know your faith pleases God. The Bible actually talks about no faith. It talks about a little faith. And it talks about great faith. If God was to come through there, say Jesus walked in this room and he was to start with me or you start with you and he went through with his measuring tape of faith, what would he find? Would he find no faith? Would he find little faith? Would he find great faith? Here's what I'm trying to say in this season. I said, God, teach me how to walk in great faith. Because I don't want him to come and with his measuring tape and be like, Elizabeth has no faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's impossible to please him. Oh, but I'm cute. I'm dressed cute for Sunday. I can go in there, raise my hand, and it's all about worship. No, he's looking for faith. He's lo- the Bible talks about looking for faith on the earth. When he zooms through, who's got faith? Don't let the enemy steal your faith in this season. Here's what Hebrews 11, 6 says in the Amplified. But without faith, it's impossible to walk with God and please him. So my lack of faith, I'm just like, this is how I read the Bible. So my lack of faith actually doesn't please God. But I sing and I worship. No, he's looking for faith. He's looking for something different than you think he's looking for. For whoever comes near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he rewards those that earnestly and diligently seek him. So there's a reward for your faith. Is this what the scripture is saying? So your faith, what would your reward be if God came with his measuring tape of faith? What would your reward be? today number three in this season there's a journey of joy look we've all how many of you have been in church more than 10 years 10 years how many 20 30 all right so when I started church, I started, I started, like, I grew up around a lot of deliverance people. And I thought, I don't know if I really want to grow up next to it. They look like they suck lemons. Like, I'm just, <laughs> can I be honest? Look, look, okay, please invite me back. Okay, so, so, like, I thought, like, aren't Christians supposed to look joyful and, like, happy and, like, like, I mean, especially deliverance people, because people are getting set free, right? We should be like, I love deliverance as part of my ministry. So, like, I think, like, are we supposed to be, like, happy people? We look, like, cranky. Like, what if somebody says, hey, man, they got more joy than, uh, and they actually come to the Lord because of your joy. Okay, I'm going to go back to my notes on that one. Okay, the joy part got y'all. Okay, so Nehemiah 8.10, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we know that scripture is so good. We got t-shirts. We got all these things. We are like singing songs about the joy of the Lord being our strength. Actually, here, I want to tell you what it means. The original Greek, uh, or Hebrew, excuse me, for joy is the word chavda, meaning joy and gladness. Being spiritual doesn't mean you look like you are ready. I don't know what it, people look like. They look like I'm spiritual, so I have to look like I'm mean. But like, what if what if God what if, what if God intends for your joy and gladness to be on your face that's in your heart? The thing is, sometimes we're not living that way. Some of us just need to go through deliverance. I know this is a house of deliverance. I get it. 
Yeah, some of us need to go through it, right? So here's the, the root word for joy in the context is to rejoice and make glad. Strength is the same verse is in Hebrew, meaning a place or means of safety, refuge, or, or stronghold. So what happens is in the middle of, this is what, what, this is what puts us different than, than the world. In the middle of trial, when somebody, you're in the middle of trial, you're not like freaking out. You've not lost your peace, right? You've not lost your faith. You're standing there in the middle of going through it, and you're like, people go like, why are you so joyous? Aren't you going through a hard time? And you go, well, it's not about laughing, that's not what that is. That's not what this joy is. Here's what this actual verse means. One of the translations of the verse, it means that you remember who God is in your life. And you go back and rehearse the things he's brought you through. So when people don't live that way, the joy of the Lord really is not their strength. So here's what I do. I'm going through a trial, then I go, you know what? You remember the shepherds used to write down on their staffs, like they would write through things what God brought them through. This is what you need to rehearse. This is why you have to remember that you have to remember what God's done over your life. So, you know what? I'm going through this trial now, but Lord, you've been so faithful. You've got, you brought me through that last week you brought. And all of a sudden, something inside of you remembering salvation. My God, some of y'all were so crazy and God saved you in the middle of your craziness just remember the goodness of God and how he saved you oh I'm saved look I got a I got a Lord that takes care of me and the goodness of God covers my life and I'm in the middle of this trial and all of a sudden like this joy starts bubbling up because I remember who he is and I remember what he did for me and that is the joy of the Lord yeah. number four Number four is live out loud with love. Amen. Here's what the dictionary says love is. The act of caring and giving to someone else, having someone's best interests and well-being as a priority in my life. Amen. To truly love is very selfless. So this is my last point, but it is pretty, all these points are really good, but this one will go a little deeper, okay? So you ask people, how many people love well? We just love so well. You just so, there might be that one person in the back row that's like, I know I'm a jerk sometimes. Like, you know, I'm kidding, but I use those words. But this is what happens. One person does one thing to you, and all of a sudden, I'm like, I thought you said you loved well. And I'm going to unpack what love, what love looks like. I love that God says God is love. I'm glad he didn't say God is miracles. He is. I'm glad he didn't say God is healing. He is. But with the way he portrayed to us that we are to follow and mirror the image of him is God is love. And you know what that will love is? The word agape. We got churches named agape. We got all these things. But here's what, here's what the word agape means. It's a choice type love. Here's what we go by. I don't feel like loving them. They did this to me, and I can't believe they're lifting their hands over in that row across from me. That's not that you are not walking in love at that point. That is a conditional love of the world. Here's what love says. I choose to love them. I'm not married yet, but I'm assuming when you wake up next to that beautiful person every day, you're going to be like, oh. They're so wonderful. They're so amazing. You don't probably feel that. What you do is you make covenant with them and you choose to love them every day, even through the hard times. Oh, yeah, I'm already stepping on toes. Okay, on this one. Okay. All right. So here's what the Bible says, and this is what we live by. The Bible, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8 says this, love is patient should we have an altar call on that one? Like, love is patient. Some fuses are short. Anybody got a short fuse? Uh, they're hard. No, you don't want to admit it? Okay. All right, this one person back here. No, kidding. So, so love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. Love, it does not dishonor others. We have a culture, and part of the culture ends up on Facebook. 
And I watch somebody write something about somebody and brrr, everybody come in. I'm like, I thought they were a Christian. Why are they bashing that person? It does not dishonor. We have a culture of dishonor and God does not ride on that. That is not kingdom. And we have got to somehow show up and say, all right. You know what I say to people sometimes? If they come to talk to me about someone, I'm not talking about like talking through a situation. That's not what I'm talking about. We all need that. But I'm talking about where you come to just bash someone. And then all of a sudden you start, when you partake of that, you partake of the spirit. Here's what we need to learn how to do. When somebody says something to us about somebody else, especially in your church or in the body, when somebody says something, you say, you know what? I'm good. You need to go talk to that person. We need to learn how to shut people down instead of entertaining the spirit and, and dividing the body in a greater way. We just are saying that we are love, and this is who the God of love is trying to do. He's trying to say, I'm trying to form in you. I'm trying to kill you. I'm trying to increase love in you. These are tests that are always, you always have love tests. Do you pass them? I don't always pass them, but here's the deal. I'll go back. If I have somehow like blunder, I'll go back and say, I'm so sorry. I should not have listened to that. Really, the best thing for you to do is go talk to that person. When you put boundaries around you, people learn like she's not the person to go and, and gossip with. Gossip is so rampant and we've made it normal Christianity, but it's not kingdom. You want to see miracles? You want to see all these things? We have got to have kingdom living. I had someone come against me for like three and a half years, you know, like we all, you know, like story of our lives, right? But here's the deal. Here's what, here's what God came to me. I'm pretty easy at forgiving people. I'm pretty easy at forgiving people. So all of a sudden, someone had called me from a different country and told me this person. And I don't know, like, so you ever just get caught off guard a little bit? And all of a sudden, out of Elizabeth, where I didn't know that was in me, you ever think like, I didn't know that was in me? Out of, out of me, I said to this, because I said, to, I said this, Lord, go judge them. That came out of my mouth. My innocent, I thought, loving mouth. And, it, and, and I was like, and I didn't pull it back. Because I was, it was three and a half years of somebody talking about me. And I never said anything, and just somehow that came out of me. And all of a sudden, I heard the Lord, because here, here's what happens. When someone actually sins against you, it's against you in the spirit. And they actually owe you in the spirit. So what you do is this is why forgiveness is really important to walk out your journey. Because if you don't forgive them, if you don't forgive them, I mean, you, God asks you to forgive them because that's who he is. He forgave you of your sin. And he's asking, we replicate him, and he asks you to do that. So when that's in the spirit, you go, you try to hold it against them, but God actually says you, because you're a Christian, you have to release them from the sin they, the sin they had against you. Isn't that scripture? So that's part of forgiveness. So in the middle of this, so all of a sudden, I have this open vision, because I really function out of visions. I have this open vision, and I saw judgment going towards that person because they sinned against me like in the spirit. So when I said, go judge him, all of a sudden, I hear the Lord say to me, the lover of my soul, he comes in as a lover when he really wants me. He's like, all of a sudden, I see this judgment going towards them. And the Lord said, why don't you forgive them and release them from the debt they owe? He said, I thought you wanted to be used by me. And I was like, oh, okay, look, look, I'm good, Jesus. Look, I, I was like, Lord, I forgive them. Like it came like that. And I said, Lord, I forgive them. I forgive them. And all of a sudden I started speaking blessing over them. Like it was like to this day I started, I even sent them an offering. I said, I, I'm going to punch that devil in the face and I'm going to actually give an offering also to them. And so it was a sacrificial offering for me. And I, I, I did that. And to this day, I, I speak blessings. I've never had that feeling to them again. And so God is requiring us in this season to actually live out the fruit of the spirit. Here, here's what we do is when the, when the gifts of the spirit, oh, we want the healing line. We want all these lines. We want this. And then you start talking about joy, love, peace, all these things that are fruit of spirit. It's like people don't want that. But actually, that's what makes you look like Jesus. So 
so in the natural, this is why we see people that are living in sin be able to do things. So the gifts of the spirit represent him, like miracle signs. All those things represent when it comes through me, but the fruit represents me. That's why you can watch someone that operates in signs and wonders and all of a sudden they're abusing their wife or husband or, well, you know, it's both these days, right? So, so like, or they're, they're living in sin. They're sleeping around. They're doing all this stuff, but, oh, they sing great. And there's an annoying here. Here's the thing I want. The fruit represents you and the gifts represent him. Please separate those. And God is requiring us to get to a level of love with our brothers and sisters in the body and in the world that somebody says, here's what scripture says. They'll know you belong to me because you're love one for another. And when God showed me that, when I was learning about, well, I'm still learning about love, when teaching me this, I realized, am I keeping out the harvest because of my lack of love for my brother? Because scripture hasn't changed. God still requires to live a life of love, a choice type love, a love that's not feeling driven. It is a choice because I'm a Christian. I'm part of a kingdom that requires me. When you go in your office, there is culture that's put in your office. You got to be on time. You got to do this. You got to do that. The kingdom has this culture. You don't get to say, I don't want to do that part. We got a king that actually enforces these things. And if you want to be part of his kingdom, he's got to be Lord over your life. And part of his Lord is being conformed to the image of God. And you're conformed to the image of God through the fruits of the spirit. My time is flying. All right. So John 13, 34 and 35. Oh, I didn't finish my scripture. All right. So uh, uh, it does not dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. My God, we don't remember the, our, our grocery list, but we'll say in 1988, remember when you did this? Y'all, we know how to keep records of wrongs, but, but this is what love says. Y'all know we do that. Y'all remember every five things somebody sent, did against you. All right. Come on, Jesus. Help us. Help us love walk this thing out. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. It always perseveres. Love never fails. John 13, 34 and 35 says, a new command I give you, love one another agape one another, have choice type love to one another, as I have loved you, so you must love one another, you have agape one another, you have choice type love to one another, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love, if you agape, if you have choice type love to one another, Luke 635 says love your enemies, agape your enemies, then do good to them, so, look, I'm stepping on some toes, okay? Those are my, t look, I received this for myself first, okay? So here's what, here's what this says. So God, my enemy, I, can, I love my friends, but he is commanded, the Lord of our life has commanded us to have choice type love. He didn't say feeling type love. He has a choice type love. This is agape. Have a choice type love to our enemies. So Lord, you want to take me to take my check that I just work for and my job hard and you want to take part of that money and go get a gift card to my enemy's favorite steakhouse and give them a gift card and blessed. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you to do. Cause here's the deal. We got to live just like him. Well, I'm not using my money to go to no, but he's trying to conform you into his image. Well, I don't want to conform. Look, you better stay on that altar till you're conformed. And God is going to use a love test in your life. And he's going to say, go buy your enemy a gift card to their favorite restaurant. And you're not going to be like throwing the gift card at them with a passive aggressive. You're actually going to go to them and say, hey, I just want to bless you to your favorite steakhouse for you and your spouse. That's the type of level of living that God is, uh, God wants from us. What if we live there? You want to see the goodness of God overtake you in this season? Live there. Live where the gifts of the spirit and the fruit of the spirit are equally, if 
here, put it this way, but the fruit of the spirit and the gifts will hang right off of those. Why don't we do that? John 15, 13, greater love has no one this and one lays down his life for his friends. First John 3, 11, for this is the message which you have heard from the beginning that we agape one another, that we have choice type love to one another. Why don't we stand? I want to make some decrees over you and your family, your businesses, uh, wherever you work. We want, we want your life to be so full and blessed. All right, as everybody's standing, Apostle Michelle, police, thank you so much for honor to come and speak in the, during this time, the celebration month. You guys are so blessed. I hope you know that. You're so blessed. You're so blessed. My goodness, look what the Lord has done. And I'm telling you, I just, I just feel this. I feel like just encourage you to start inviting some of your friends to come to church with you. There's something on that. There's, there's going to be like, there's this, it's almost like an evangelism component that God is increasing in this house. I just feel it just settling in even deeper. And God is going to use you to, and when they come in this house, you're going to see their lives transform. Sometimes we don't even think about, we think like churches for Sunday, we won't invite our coworkers or people we meet in Walmart, or wherever, you know, wherever. Ask, ask the Holy Spirit to give you a prophetic word. Prophetic evangelism is going to increase and increase. Ask the Lord to give you a word for someone. And when you go, do that and then lead it. I want to I say this. Plane, uh, plane evangelism is my favorite because I pretty much live on planes. And so what are they going to do? They can only go to the bathroom, but so much, okay? <laughs> Look for me. And so here's, here's, here's a real tool that I ask the Lord. Here's my tool I ask the Lord. I say this. God, show me a dark part of their heart. Something nobody else would know about. Because I used to go do an evangelism forever ago, it feels like. And I used to take this, you remember the spiritual laws? That's how old I am, okay? Y'all remember? Some of the young people are like, we don't know what the spiritual laws are. Okay, so, we used to, and I used to go through an hour later, I could not lead him to the Lord. And then I got frustrated and I was like, Lord, there's got to be a better way to do this. I need to multitask my time. And so all of a sudden, the Lord, I found this book called The Voice of God by Cindy Jacobs, and it like radically changed my life. And so all of a sudden, I realized like, Lord, I could get a word for you for someone and you could give them because remember this, God loves people way more than we ever will. God loves your kids. God loves your parents even more than we, than you could ever love them. He just, he's just so good and he's so big on love, right? God's love. And so in the middle of it, I would started to go out to my evangelism and I would just say to, I would try to say, God, can you give me a word for someone? And then I would go. And the more and more, and like, if you have a fear of doing that, just know like you can get past your fear. Say, God, this is how I got past my fear of doing evangelism. I would say, I would remember when I went out, God loves people more than I ever could. And he really cares. And he will give me a word for them because he really cares about where his soul goes. So in the middle of that, all of a sudden starts flowing. So now I'm on the plane. And I, I remember one of the times I was on this plane and this girl was next to me. And I say to her, I said, um, I said, you know, when you were four, your uncle abused you. Da, da, da. I give something that would never be known, right? All of a sudden, she starts crying. She starts weeping. And I go, oh, but God really loves you and he cares you. Can I, can I lead you into the Lord? And do you want to give your life to the Lord? And she says, yes, I want to give my life to the Lord. So this happens so much. I lead so many people to the Lord just by the word of the Lord. And I can do that in five minutes and then tell them to be plugged into a, a, a church, like be plugged into a local house. And so... So all of this to say is God wants to use you. Evangelism is going to increase in this house and God is going to use you to bring people. It's not, I know you guys know this, but it's not Apostle Jackson's role to go win people and bring them all in herself. We're a body and we get to do it together. So this week, ask the Holy Spirit, say, Lord, can you give me a word for someone? Can you give me a word? And then I want to, like, my goal is to pray for them during the week, and then I'm going to ask them to come to church with me. Is that okay? Is that okay to do? All right. Because when they come in, they'll see your love one for another. That's the harvest. It's harvest time, guys. It's harvest time. All right. Let decrees. 
Lord, we decree that the goodness of God would cover and overtake our lives. Lord, we decree that the goodness of God would come and overtake our families, our finances, our inheritances. Lord, we decree that the goodness of God would cover and overtake and give, and we would have supernatural favor on our jobs. And there's a promotion. There's somebody that sowed today. You're wanting a promotion. God said, believe for it because you are going to get that promotion. Lord, I, I decree that the goodness of God would cover everything that God has entrusted me to steward while on the earth. Lord, I thank you for Hope Christian Church. Lord, I thank you that you You've put them as a tree in this area to bear a lot of fruit. It's, it's bore a lot of fruit in the past, and it is about to bear so much fruit in the future. And Lord, we thank you that you would surround this. There's such angelic activity that's going to increase in this house. Wow. Wow. Your children. I just see... I see there's a little girl, it's a little girl that attends here is going to start having like crazy visions. Lord, we thank you for the increase in the children. We thank you, Lord. Wow. Lord, I bless this house. I bless this house with, Lord, with every spiritual blessing, Lord. We bless it. We thank you for the leadership. And I see very high profile people coming to start attending this church that are not even already. I don't know who's here, but I see very high profile people coming in. Lord, we'll love them well. We'll love them well, Lord. We thank you for this house of hope. We thank you for this house of increase. We thank you for this house, Lord, that it's going to bear much fruit. Such glory, such glory. Can we get the worship team back? There's a visitation that's coming and a glory that's going to set in this house. Lord, we thank you for love being our highest aim. Start with me, Lord. Increase my love walk, Lord. Lord, in this season, we're going to guard our peace. We're going to guard our faith, Lord. We're going to walk in joy, real joy. We're going to remember, Lord, you're so good been so good you've been so faithful to all of us and Lord we're going to walk in such deep love Lord we thank you for the harvest that's going to come in this church Lord the oppressed will be set free. Such glory. Increase your glory, Lord. Increase your glory. Some people here are going to start having visitations from the Lord. Increase visitations. We're so hungry for you, Lord. We're just so hungry for your presence. None of this is worth it if you're not with us. Just so hungry, Lord. so hungry. 
telling you, I just see a visitation happening to this church. The children will be weeping. They're going to be visited. It's just such glory. sang about it today. It's a new day. It's a new day. Lord, we thank you for the new day. Not just a new day, but the new way. The inheritance is not just about a new day. It's about a new way. that Lord I hear the Lord saying, I'm opening new doors you didn't even dream about. I'm opening new doors. Lord, we thank you that this year we're going to receive and see the goodness of God in our lives, Lord. Even areas that the enemy has had a field day in our lives, Lord, we decree the goodness of God in those areas. Lord, come and overtake us. I want to, you know me, I'm going to activate that word. <laughs> so we want to pray, um, call our, our prayer team up. And for those who, uh, okay. for those, you know, Apple Watch now. I got to I got to watch my steps, right? <laughs> but it gets, I get texts. I get distracted. So sorry. All right. So I want to activate that word. If you believe that, that the word that was released today from Elizabeth is for you, I want you to come and receive from the Lord. I'm going to have Rico minister. Uh, we have a song prepared. But if you believe that word is for you, that you know that in 2023, that you need to see the goodness of God, you need to steward your peace, you need to guard your joy. Come on. I want to, I want, I want you to receive from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this place. God, we thank you that this is a holy moment. 
that this is an ordained time. God, we thank you for 44 years, but Father, we thank you, and we stretch ourselves even to begin to see what you are releasing us into in this time and this hour. Lord, we thank you for such a time as this. You've raised up this house. You've raised up leaders in this house to steward the vision of an apostolic center for this region. Father, we thank you that you're going to cause us to be that army uh, that goes into the marketplace, that goes into the highways and the byways, that we might be your voice, even as John the Baptist prepared the way. God, I thank you that this church will prepare the way for you. We thank you, Lord. Come on, just begin to lift your hands. If you come down to the altar, Father, we bless you and we thank you for how you're moving, how you're moving. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. You just got, you guys begin to minister. Hallelujah. 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 Longing to have more of you, and you have more of me. Words fail me, I don't know how to express my desire to be closer to you. But I'm here now with my hands.
Come on, you just begin to lift your hands in the sanctuary. There is an impartation of the Holy Spirit for you. Come on, even as we've begun to song, sing, and even as the praise team has already sung, Father, we're crying out today for more of you that you would receive this sacrifice a life holy and acceptable to you that we would be that living temple that sacrifice for you come on you just begin to talk to the lord right now oh father we thank you and we just steward the fire even the fan the flames of the altar that's upon our own hearts today consume us Consume us, consume us, that we would be, even as the word is declared, ministers of flame for you. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. Come on, you just begin to speak to him if you're in the audience, if you're in the congregation. We just bless your holy name, Father, for how you're moving. And we recognize this moment, this appointment. Hallelujah. 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 You were starting to stir prophetically. You can just release what you have.
So we just want to bless Elizabeth. I think she's calling somebody out. When, when you're finished ministering, we're going to bless you and pray for you. He is a risen king. So death could not hold you down. And you are the reason king. And you see it, see it in majesty. Oh, and you are the reason. sweater. I believe you're in a key season in your life and you're not here by accident, but this is actually a divine moment in your life. And there have been some deep heartbreaks in your life. And I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that he will restore He will restore the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm have eaten in your life. And even that word that came forth today about financial increase, do not be afraid to embrace it because this is the beginning of a time of restoration in your life. Have you not heard that he is the maker of the heaven and the earth? And would he withhold his goodness from you, his precious child and possession? For he was ransomed, you were ransomed by his precious love. So, Father, we thank you for bringing your son here to this house of hope, this house of healing. And we decree that the word begins to work in his life like never before. And I thank you that hope begins to spring up because even as a cut down tree begins to sprout and begins to bud again at the scent of water. Father, we recognize that the water level of the Holy Spirit is even rising in his life and in his heart heart as this word has been decreed over him and now we lose the anointing and the grace of God and we declare that he shall see the goodness of God in his life and in this season and in this time and in this year and we thank you Lord that it's going to confound the wisdom of man and it's going to cause him to be able to run hard after you. I thank you that every shackle even in his life that even has been upon his 
his feet is being broken right now in the presence of the Father. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this place. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we want to pray for you and bless you if that's okay. And they're going to pray. These are elders in our church, pastors in our church. They're going to pray for you. <laughs> Lift up my sister to you, Lord God. I thank you for the gifts that you've given her, Lord God, and all that she has opened up her heart to pour out to your body, Lord God. I pray, oh God, that that will be an increase for her, Lord God. Even as she's poured out, God, that it will be poured to her, Lord God. Every desire of her heart, all those secret things that she has not spoken of, Lord God, I pray that you would give to her, Lord God. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for the, the manifest, the increase that she will see, Lord God. Lord God, that her cup will overflow, Lord God, with your goodness and your mercy, Lord God. That the gifts will grow exponentially, Lord God. That it will be a, a mighty work on your, your hand, Lord God. I thank you that she has a word in her mouth. That is, that is needed in the body of Christ. And Lord God, I thank you for new doors that are open, new opportunities to yes. walk into new places that she will be surprised to have the opportunity to go, God. We thank you for just doing a mighty work, Lord God. We thank you for doing exceedingly abundantly above all that she can think or ask, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I see many open doors for you. I see you soaring like an eagle just high up in the sky. And God's just going to show you so many wonderful things. And, and I see like a fresh outpouring of anointing on you. And as you speak forth the word of God, you're just going to see people transform right before your eyes. The hand of the Lord is upon you mightily. Think not that your gifts are not, um, I don't know what I want to say, think that they are not very useful and he, in need of them. I actually see you like starting the young school of the prophets for the young people so that they will learn to prophesy. I just see you moving in ways that you've never moved in before because God is opening up many doors for you and I just really see you soaring higher than you ever thought you would soar and he's going to begin to give you new dreams and new visions you're just going to do things beyond your imagination. And I, you're a mighty, mighty woman of God. And his hand is upon you for good. Thank you. Thank you. I just stand in agreement with the prayers that have already been said. But as I've been standing here, I just keep hearing Deborah. Deborah. And I believe that the Lord is saying that you have that Deborah anointing that the authority on you is just so great. You have the authority not to judge, but as a judge. And I believe also that the increase in teaching and the increase in the Holy Spirit, the increase in your gift, it is going to be exponential. It's going to be something greater than you could have even imagined. So Father, I just thank you for my sister. I thank you, Lord God, for the word that you've given her for this house today. I thank you, Lord, for the authority that you've placed over her, for your Holy Spirit, Lord, for her gifts, God, for her calling oh God for everything that you've placed on her that it will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus and we just bless you now in Jesus name amen God bless you two things uh, strength and you're like a J dam bomb now let me explain what that means I come from a military background so I think military all the time I have to translate it so a J dam bomb is this it's simply a regular bomb that you take out the fins at the back and attach some new fins to it that is, direct, that is directed by a satellite to guide it to a certain location. It's pretty accurate. It's very accurate, actually. So you could drop it from an aircraft that's 30,000 feet and it's accurate within feet, you know what I'm saying? So I see you as a JDAM bomb. So what that means is God is going to direct you in more ways. That's why I said strength and you're a J-Dam bomb because you need strength for the journey. So I pour strength on you and in you in the name of Jesus. Physical strength, mental strength, 
uh, spiritual strength, mental strength, just the just warfare and having to go through continual harassments from the enemy, even though you walk in a level of authority. I thank you, Father, that upticks in the name of Jesus. So even likewise, even as you said out of your mouth that this is a new day, a new beginnings, I thank you that you've come by this gas station to pour out, but the Lord is pouring right back into you. So I thank you for strength. We love you strength. We love you strength, strength, strength in every single area. You, Lord, I thank you that you perfect everything that concerns her in the name of Jesus. Answer the cries of her heart, Father, in the name of Jesus on stuff that she just puts aside because she knows she has to power through and plow through certain things. I think that she's a plower. I thank you, Father, that she's like an ox because she's able to go through things and take responsibility and have weight. But I see strength being poured on you, laid it upon you, almost like that garment that you have on you now that's covering you. There's strength that's being mantled on you in the name of Jesus. So I thank you, Father, for a refreshing, 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 for a refreshing in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that you make her so accurate in the realm of the Spirit. I thank you for the gift of wisdom and revelation, which is obviously already on her life, but you, you turn that up. You turn that up because of the fact it's needed for what she has to do in the now and in the next, the next of God. So I thank you, Father, for refreshing your daughter, touching your daughter, strengthening your daughter, keeping your daughter, encouraging your daughter in Jesus' name. Amen. We just bless what the Lord is doing with you. We just all, ladies, if you don't mind just laying hands on her. Father, we just bless what you're doing in Elizabeth's life, Lord, and we just say more. We just say more, more glory, more power. Lord, I thank you that you're gonna restore and bring healing to every area in her body, even those things she shared with me. So Lord, we just lose that healing anointing, that healing that is upon this house, God, that restoration would begin to flow and begin to activate and begin to lose in every cell on the molecular level, even in that ear that she talked about and even in her body. So we lose that anointing now to begin to work, God. We thank you for, for the creative flow of the Holy Ghost hitting her body now. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank Thank you, Father, for how you're going to cause her to be that bomb in the spirit. And so we activate the gift of God within her on another level. We release the anointing of God to begin to flow and to bring healing in her soul realm. God, we thank you that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but we thank you that your word declares that you deliver us out of them all and we thank you Lord that that is her portion and that she too will see the goodness of God in her life and we decree it so now come on and put your hands together for Jesus we thank you Lord that this is a new day and a new way for our sister in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, and we just thank you for celebrating with us 44 years of ministry. You know, a church can't be strong without strong people. So give yourselves a hand for being a part of this incredible church. And I just want to thank everybody who came out to the party on Friday night. Come on. We had a good time together and a good time in Jesus. This is the official end of our service. I bless you with the Father's love today that he might open doors of favor for you, cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace henceforth and forevermore. Opening doors, causing you to be a blessing and a carrier of his glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Tell somebody on your way out, have an overcoming week in Jesus' name.